Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about the mirror equation. This picture here just shows how light reflects off of a concave mirror, and it shows the various uh, parts of what we're looking at. So we have an object, we have an image, and some of the characteristics that we'll be learning about today. So we have a couple learning goals here today. The first is to describe the conventions used for concave and convex mirrors, and the second is to calculate the focal length image distance or object distance when you're given the other two values. So let's take a look at the conventions to start off. Here we have a uh, object and it's in front of a concave mirror. So with our object we can use our ray diagram rules to draw the image. So we have a light ray parallel to the principal axis that reflects through the focus. We have a light ray that goes through the focus and reflects parallel to the principal axis. And where they cross is where the top of our image will be. So now we have our object and we have our image and we need to describe these things. So first of all, the distance between the object and the vertex of the mirror is called DO. D for distance and O for object. The distance between the image and the vertex of the mirror is DI. D for distance and I for image. And then the distance between the vertex and the focus is F for focal length. So those are the three characteristics that we'll be looking at today. Now let's see how they look in a convex mirror. So again, we'll go through the steps of our ray diagram. We have our object there. If we have a light, a light ray that goes uh, parallel to the principal axis, it will reflect as if it came from the focus. And if we have a light ray that goes towards the center of curvature, it will reflect back along the same path. Where those two light rays cross is where we'll have our image. So now let's look at how we would describe these. The distance of the object is the distance between where the object is and the vertex of the mirror. And the distance of the image, or DI, is the distance between the vertex and the image. And then finally, the focal length is the distance between the vertex and the focus, and we use F to represent that. Now let's take a look at some of the conventions regarding these different um, ways of describing our images. So if for DO, it will always be positive and it will never be negative. So it's impossible to have a negative object distance. The image distance though, sometimes we will call it positive and sometimes we will call it negative. If it is a real image, we will give it a positive value. And if it's a virtual image, we will give it a negative value. Now, it's impossible to measure a negative distance. You can't get out a ruler and measure a negative distance. This is just a convention. So if the image distance is five centimeters, but it happens to be a virtual image, we will call it negative five centimeters. So even though the actual distance is five centimeters, we give it a little negative sign to indicate that it is a virtual image. Now let's take a look at our focus. It'll be positive in a concave mirror, and it will be negative for a convex mirror. So again, the focus can only actually be measured as a positive number, but we give it a convention of a plus or minus sign to indicate whether it is concave or convex. So if we measure the focal length to be three centimeters, and it's a convex mirror, we will call it negative three. So we're gonna write negative three, even though the actual measurement is three centimeters, because that negative will let us know that we're dealing with a convex mirror rather than a concave mirror. So let's take a look at the actual mirror equation. Let's start off with the one in white. That is the standard version of the mirror equation. 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. Now in order to solve for any one of those three variables, we'll need to rearrange the equation. We're not going to go through the steps on how to rearrange the equation here, as it was expected that you would learn how to do this sort of thing from one of your previous math classes. If you struggled in math on how to rearrange equations, or maybe you were good at it in math but you just forget now, or you're having trouble rearranging this particular equation, come ask me in class and we can go through all of those steps, but we don't have time to do it in the video right now. 
Now, if you really struggle with rearranging equations, but you happen to have a very good memory, you can memorize the three versions of the rearranged equation. So I've shown them in the three colors below the white equation. Those are the rearranged versions, and you're welcome to just memorize those and write them as is on a test or a quiz, and you'll get full marks for having, as long as this is the proper equation, having it written down in a rearranged form rather than the original form to begin with. So let's just take a look again at what those uh, letters represent. F is the focal length, DO is the distance of the object, and DI is the distance of the image. So let's take a look at an example how we would solve this type of question. So a light bulb is in front of a concave mirror which has a focal length of 4.69 centimeters. The real image is located 9.2 centimeters from the mirror. Determine the distance of the original object from the mirror. So we're given a whole ton of information here. Let's take a look at that. A light bulb is in front of a concave mirror which has a focal length of six or sorry, 4.69 centimeters. And this is a concave mirror, so we know our focal length will be positive. It then tells us we have a real image which is 9.2 centimeters from the mirror. Since, a, since it is a real image, we know that it will be a positive number. And then we need to know the distance of the original object from the mirror. So let's use our grass method. We start off with our givens. So the focal length is 4.69 centimeters. And again, I used positive 4.69 because it tells us it is a concave mirror. And then we have here the distance of the image is 9.2 centimeters. And I used a positive number for the distance of the image because it tells us it is a real image. So let's take a look at the required. What do we need to find? The distance of the original object, or DO. So for our analysis, we'll start off with the original version of the equation. 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. And if we rearrange that equation for DO, we're going to end up with DI times F equals DI minus F. And now let's substitute and solve. So for DO, we have DI, which is 9.2 centimeters, times F, which is 4.69 centimeters, over and DI 9.2 centimeters minus 4.69 centimeters. And if we go through and do all of that math, we're going to end up with 9.5 centimeters. So let's write a sentence here. The object is 9.5 centimeters from the mirror. So that's how we would solve a problem like this using one of the versions of the rearranged equation. Let's take a look at another example now. A candle is placed a distance of 16.58 centimeters from a convex mirror. The virtual image was located 12.89 centimeters from the mirror. What is the focal length of the mirror? So we're given lots of information here. Let's take a look at what we're given. So the candle is placed a distance of 16.58 centimeters. Since the candle is the original object, this represents our DO, so our object distance. We're dealing with a convex mirror this time. Uh, the virtual image, so we have a virtual image, was located 12.89 centimeters from the mirror. So it tells us the distance of the image is 12.89 centimeters, but since it's a virtual image, we need to write negative 12.89 because that's the convention for a virtual image. And then it's asking us what the focal length of the mirror is. So let's use our grass method. Given the object distance, so it tells us the candle is placed 16.58 centimeters from the mirror. So that's our object distance. And then it tells us the image distance. And because it is a virtual image, we write negative 12.89 centimeters. 
required, it's asking us what is the focal length of the mirror. So focal length equals question mark. For our analysis, I'll start off with the original version of the equation. 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. And if we rearrange this equation, f is going to be di times do over di plus do. So now let's substitute and solve. So f is going to be equal to di, which is negative 12.89 centimeters, times our do, which is 16.58 centimeters, over and our di is negative 12.89 centimeters minus do 16.58 centimeters. And if we do all of that math, we're going to end up with negative 57.92 centimeters. Now let's just take a pause here. Our focus has a negative sign. What does that mean? A negative focal length represents a convex mirror. If we look back into our question, it tells us that we're dealing with a convex mirror. So we know that we have the correct, or at least an answer that's on the right path. We don't know that the number is correct, but we know that we have the right sign. If our answer was positive, we know we've made a mistake somewhere because a convex mirror can't have a positive sign in the focal length because the focal length has the convention of negative for a convex mirror. So always go back and do some little checks from the question to your answer to make sure you have the correct sign. Now when I write my sentence, because the negative sign is just a convention to tell us that we're dealing with a convex mirror, we know that the actual focal length that we could measure with the ruler is uh, 57.92 centimeters and it's a positive distance. So we can only ever measure positive distances. We just add that negative sign in there to indicate it's a convex mirror. So when I state in my sentence what the focal length is, I'm going to use the positive value because that's the actual number value that could be measured with a ruler. So for my sentence, the focal length is 57.92 centimeters and that'll be my final answer. And I could include here the focal length of the convex mirror just to clarify that that's where our negative sign went, we took the negative sign away because it was a convex mirror. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can I describe the conventions used for concave and convex mirrors? So those are the positives and negative signs. And can I calculate the focal length, the image distance, or the object distance when given the other two? And we've only looked at two of those examples, but the third one is very similar. So if you can do all these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.